Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing and Sports. Bomb Squad! <laughs> hey, listen, listen. In boxing, you find a way to win or you find a way to lose. Hey, there's so much talks when it comes to Deontay Wilder right now. I'm telling you, damn Saudi Arabia was probably one of the best things that could have happened for boxing, in my opinion, because there's so much content for a guy like me to come and make videos. I just don't have enough time in the day to make the videos I want. But I just came across an article, right? I'm always reading, but it's on BoxingScene.com, right? So I'm going to go over some of that with y'all. But it blew my mind because I'm like, damn, can, we just, can, can, can Finkel and Eddie Hearn, can these guys just let the Deontay Wilder, Anthony Joshua, can they just leave those discussions alone unless they're really going to make the fight? So anyway, Shirley Finkel goes on and he says that he and Eddie Hearn are getting along really, really well, but that Eddie Hearn still never delivers Anthony Joshua. Now, I started laughing. So I went through the article, and let me kind of go over it with you a little bit, but um, we know Finkel and Eddie Hearn, they've had a lot of issues in the past, but they seem to have patched things up. But as a result of patching up that kind of rocky relationship, it doesn't mean that equates to meaningful business transactions, right? Now, we know Deontay Wilder has, he has a team. But to me, it seems like he has a huge team. You got, you got Finkel, you got Heyman, and there's what's going on over at Showtime. But I, I don't know who, what the role is for everyone, but we know that Finkel is a longtime manager of, uh, uh, of Deontay Wilder. Now, we know Hearn's ahead of Matchroom, and Hearn, you know, he's Joshua's guy, right? But all the feud that's gone on in the, fast, in the past few years, it seems like this should be the year we can get that fight. But according to Finkel, that he and Hearn are in a much better place. But he says the, the, the Wilder-AJ fight doesn't seem to be getting any closer, which is totally, total, totally contrary to what, what we've, we've been hearing, at least from Eddie Hearn's side, about there have been talks. That's the fight they want to make. But Finkel said that they get along, but Hearn just doesn't want to deliver Joshua. And then he went, while he was in Saudi Arabia, he made some remarks. And we know Wilder was there, Finkel was there. There were a lot of other fighters who were there as well. But what he said, right, because Wilder indicated wanting to fight in Saudi. He talked about two Ngannou fights, talked about AJ. But when Finkel was asked if a Wilder and Joshua showdown could take place before the end of the year, like what Eddie Hearn's talking about, kind of like what Wilder suggested and what we're all kind of leading to believe could happen. Finkel deferred to Hearn and what he said, the ball is in the British promoter's court. Finkel said, go ask him, talking about Eddie Hearn. If, if it was me, yes, but I've been trying for five years now, I guess, and it's not because of our side that the fight hasn't happened. Finkel believes that there's reluctance, not so much from Hearn, he says from AJ, when it comes to a Wilder fight. See, and this is what we need. We need these guys to talk because we need facts. We don't need anyone speaking subliminally. We don't need people talking around about ways. Just cut through the chase and give us the facts. But anyway, Joshua was scheduled to, to return to the ring April 1st against Jermaine Franklin, right? Now, we understand he had two back-to-back -back defeats to Yusick. Joshua's got Der Derrick James. Things should be on the up and up. But at the end of the day, no matter what anyone else says, it comes down to the fighter, is what Finkel's saying. He says, when Mike Tyson wanted to fight uh, Michael Spinks, no one can stop it. He says, if Joshua wants to fight, then it will happen. If he doesn't, he'll make excuses. Now, I don't know if I agree with that. I think Eddie Hearn has a lot of say over what Anthony Joshua does. I think the guys at the zone have a lot of say. Doesn't mean they're going to to drive the decision, I think they have a lot of influence because there's a lot of money that's been invested in Anthony Joshua. And I just don't think they want to see him lose a fourth time. Now, what I will say is, if he loses to Deontay Walter, right, which I think Joshua would be the favorite in that fight, but if he... <sighs> Excuse me, I need a cup of coffee. But if he was to lose to Deontay Walter, I don't think that would be a bad thing. It's not like he's losing to... To Pulev. It's not like he, you know, with Franklin, Jermaine Franklin. If he loses to Franklin, that's a problem. 
But Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury, AJ, those guys need to mix it up. They really do. So I don't I don't think that's a bad thing. But again, when when it comes to, to, to Finkel, he says Wilder is open to doing business with other entities, right? He is. And he said he rebutted the rumors that Wilder cut ties with PBC. He said the only thing changed is Wilder's just open doing business with, business with other entities. He said it's not really that Wilder's a free agent. If someone comes to us with something great, we'll look at it and take it. But he's still with PBC, basically. So that's, again, Al Heyman getting out in front of a problem before it can grow. And him saying, you know what? We can't give you the kind of money you want from fighting guys underneath our umbrella. But what we can do is say, go on over to these other areas where the money's at and go on out there and get it. I'm not going to stop you. It's all about growing you and also growing our, plat our platform and our business. But I I'll tell you what. Back on this thing about AJ not wanting to fight Walter. You know, I've heard people talk about Anthony Joshua. And again, I don't have any teeth in this. It's just people I hear on social media who have conversations like myself. Whether they're saying Anthony Joshua is, um, he's he wants to be the show pony. Some people calling him a, a fairy. They're saying that he just uh, wants everyone to cater to him. His expectation and financial demands are unrealistic, unrealistic when you're trying to negotiate a deal. But the one thing that I was surprised Finkel did not point out here is he didn't say anything about the zone dropping the ball. And I think he just chose to not even mention the zone because he really feels that if Anthony Joshua wants to fight, he can make it happen. Now, I'm not a manager. I haven't been around boxing as like Shelly Finkel. Definitely not. I definitely haven't been uh, watching boxing as long as this man's been involved with it. But what I what I can tell you is, I I still struggle with the idea that if a boxer wants a fight to happen, that it will happen. I I still think when you're in a situation like Joshua that has a share. I think he actually has a share of a. Uh, the zone. I know when he retires, he's supposed to be going and there's a role that they carved out for him. But I just don't think these guys want to put him in a position where he may lose. But at the end of the day, when you come out to and you listen to Finkel, Finkel's like saying, don't blame us. We'll fight anyone. The fight that we want, which will be AJ at some point in time, we'll make it right now. It's all on Eddie Hearn. It's all on AJ. Don't look at us over on this side of the street. So, I don't know. I'm waiting to hear what Eddie Hearn has to say. And once I hear that, I'll report on it. That being said, y'all keep cool. Shout out to the veterans, all seven continents. I'm in the breeze.